This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading is by Michael Sirwa. Michael.Sirwa, S I R O I S, dot com. Penguin Island by Anatole France. Book Two The Ancient Times. Book Two, Chapter Five. THE MARRIAGE OF KRAKEN AND ORBOROSIA During these times there lived on the island of Alca a penguin, whose arm was strong and whose mind was subtle. He was called Kraken, and had his dwelling on the beach of shadows, whither the inhabitants never ventured, for fear of serpents that lodged in the hollows of the rocks, and lest they might encounter the souls of penguins that had died without baptism. These, in appearance like livid flames and uttering doleful groans, wandered night and day along the deserted beach. For it was generally believed, though without proof, that among the penguins that had been changed into men at the blessed male's prayer, several had not received baptism, and returned after their death to lament amid the tempests. Kraken dwelt on this savage coast in an inaccessible cavern. The only way to it was through a natural tunnel a hundred feet long, the entrance of which was concealed by a thick wood. One evening, as Kraken was walking through this deserted plain, he happened to meet a young and charming woman penguin. She was the one that the monk Magus had clothed with his own hands, and thus was the first to have worn the garments of chastity. In remembrance of the day when the astonished crowd of penguins had seen her moving gloriously in her robe, tinted like the dawn, this maiden had received the name Orborosia. A note from the author. Orb, poetically, a globe, when speaking of the heavenly bodies, by extension, any species of globular body. At the sight of Kraken she uttered a cry of alarm, and darted forward to escape from him. But the hero seized her by the garments that floated behind her, and addressed her in these words, Damsel, tell me thy name, thy family, and thy country. But Orborosia kept looking at Kraken with alarm. Is it you I see, sir? she asked him trembling, or is it not rather your troubled spirit? She spoke in this way because the inhabitants of Alca, having no news of Kraken since he went to live on the beach of shadows, believed that he had died and descended among the demons of night. Cease to fear, daughter of Alca, answered Kraken. He who speaks to thee is not a wandering spirit, but a man full of strength and might. I shall soon possess great riches. And young Orborosia asked, how dost thou think of acquiring great riches, O Kraken, since thou art a child of penguins? By my intelligence, answered Kraken. I know, said Orborosia, that in the time thou dwelt among us, thou wert renowned for thy skill in hunting and fishing. No one equaled thee in taking fishes in a net, or in piercing with thy arrows the swift-flying birds. It was but a vulgar and laborious industry, O maiden. I have found a means of gaining much wealth for myself without fatigue. But tell me who thou art. I am called Orborosia, answered the young girl. Why art thou so far away from thy dwelling and in the night? Kraken, it was not without the will of heaven. What meanest thou, Orborosia? That heaven, O Kraken, placed me in thy path, for what reason I know not. Kraken beheld her for a long time in silence. Then he said with gentleness, Oberosia, come into my house. It is that of the bravest and most ingenious of the sons of the penguins. If thou art willing to follow me, I will make thee my companion. Then casting down her eyes, she murmured, I will follow thee, master. It is thus that the fair Oberosia became the consort of the hero Kraken. This marriage was not celebrated with songs and torches because Kraken did not consent to show himself to the people of the penguins, but hidden in his cave he planned great designs. End of chapter 5